Okay, thanks for being here today. Thanks for, for your time. And in this presentation, we are going to see the S-Flow technology. So when there are some cases in which it's very useful to have S-Flow, and there are some other cases that, of course, it's not useful in the other cases. We are also going to see how does it work. So the building blocks of the S-Flow architecture, the agents, the collectors, the transport. And eventually, we are going to use Wireshark to dissect and analyze S-Flow. So what is S-Flow? Well, S-Flow is a monitoring technology that has been designed to monitor network devices. Network devices that are typically switches, but they can also be routers, firewalls, and other appliances. So Hasflow wants to monitor their interfaces as well as the traffic that is traversing those devices. And how does S-Flow perform this kind of monitoring? How does S-Flow provide this kind of visibility? Well, it uses basically two things that there are called counter samples and flow samples. We will see them in detail later during this presentation, but for now, let's just think about a bunch of data that is put that is packed into UDP datagrams and sent over the network by the monitored network device. Let's use this simple topology to have a better idea of the visibility that is provided by this technology. In this topology, we have three hosts that are connected using a switch and they can reach the internet. As we can see from this chart, the switch is S-flow capable. It means that it can provide us, via S-flow, the information on the status and speed of its own interfaces. And to do this, it uses the so-called counter samples. And, and as we can see from this image, the counter samples, we have a magnifying lens over the interfaces because the visibility that is provided using counter samples is the visibility on our interfaces. On the other hand, S-Flow can give us visibility on the real traffic packets that are traversing the switch. So for example, here we have the dashed yellow line the dashed bidirectional yellow line that wants to represent packets that are traveling from an host to the internet and vice versa. As the switch is as flow capable, it will take samples of the packets that it observes and send them in the so-called flow samples. But let's have a, a closer look at those two kind of samples. And let's just get Wireshark. It is one of the best tools to have an idea of what is a counter sample and what is uh, a flow sample. Let's start with a, an example of a counter sample. Well, a counter sample, as I've mentioned before, will report you status information of one or more interfaces of the network device. This information includes the interface speed, the status, if the interface is up or down, the cumulative counters for bytes and packets, as well as other information. And as we can see on the right here, we have Wireshark that is showing an S-flow counter sample. The quality of the projector is not that good, but I hope you, you can see here that we have several, several 
metrics that include input and output bytes and packets, the number of multicast packets, the status of the interface that is up, and of course we have an ID, which in this example is the ID 129, that is basically the ID of the interface in the device. So we know that the interface 129 of the Airflow device is up and <coughs> has these scanners available. The other, the other sample that Airflow provide, provides is the flow sample. What is basically a, a flow sample? Well, it's just a random selection of a fraction of all the packets that are observed in the network device. And as we can see here on the right, this time we use Wireshark to visualize a flow sample. And in this flow sample, we have some metadata, including the interface that, the interface that has, has been used by the packet to enter the network device. But the most important thing is that in the flow sample, we have an actual sample of a packet that was traveling in the network device. So as we can see from here, we open the flow sample and nested within the flow sample, we have another ethernet packet, another IP. So that is actually a sample of the traffic that has been gone through the network device. So having said that, I've mentioned many times sample, sample, sample. So S-Flow is a sampling technology. This opens up to several uh, pros and cons. Let's start and let's have a look at the S-Flow pros. So when is S-Flow useful? Well, it's useful, for example, to do the estimation of the top talkers in general. Top talkers can be the top IP addresses, the top autonomous systems, the top layer seven protocols, including HTTP, YouTube. So in general, it's useful when you want to estimate who are the top talkers that are using your network devices. Because, again, as they are top talkers, they will send a large fraction of all the packets that are observed in the network device. And for this reason, they have a higher chance of being sampled by S-Flow. So at the same time, similarly, it is useful to detect volumetric attacks because volumetric attacks will tend to saturate the one or more interfaces of the network device. So you will be able to spot them immediately using S-Flow. Moreover, S-Flow is, uh, is useful, is good also when it comes to do capacity planning or traffic engineering, because you have the visibility of, the, of your network devices, of, and if you know your network topology, you can understand if and what links are under or overutilized. You can decide to establish a new links to balance the traffic from point A to point B, for example. It, it, it's also useful when you have to detect uh, malfunctioning interfaces, when you have to detect uh, network issues in general, because as we have seen before, we have the counter samples that gives us the status of the interfaces of our network devices. There are also situations in which S-Flow is not useful. So when is S-Flow not useful? Well, in general, it's not useful if you have to detect the bottom talkers. So the guys in your network that are talking the least. Because for the same reason, S-Flow samples packets of samples the packets that are flowing in your network devices. So 
the fewer packets are seen by, by a certain source or by a, a certain destination, the lower is the probability of those packets to be sampled by S4. For this reason, it's not useful also if you want to do, if you want to operate it with uh, intrusion detection or intrusion prevention systems, or at least uh, those intrusion prevention and detection systems that, work, that are signature based, because they need to inspect the signatures. And, as, and since S-Flow generates sample traffic, the chance of having the actual signature in a sampled packet is not that high. Moreover, it's not useful when it comes to do, when it comes to do stateful protocol analysis. So forget about doing TCP analysis uh, with S-Flow. If you open a TCP stream generated with S-Flow, <coughs> chances are that the TCP stream will be broken because only a fraction of the packet of that TCP stream have been sampled by S-Flow. So it's not useful when it comes to do any kind of sequence number analysis, any kind of a TCP reassembly, for example. It's also useless to detect uh, low and slow network attacks, such as the one known as uh, with uh, slow lorries, for example. So, and, and finally, uh, again, you cannot use it to do content reconstructions out of the TCP, for example, because with sample traffic, you cannot reconstruct images or files because they will be broken. So now that we have seen the visibility that is provided by S-Flow, we have seen when it is useful and when it is not useful, we can move to have a closer look at an S-Flow monitoring system. An S-Flow monitoring system is basically composed of two parts, the agents and the collectors. The agents are those that are embedded in your network devices, as the switch we have seen before, and they are in charge to create the samples and marshal them into UDP datagrams that are sent towards one or more collectors. So what is an S-Flow collector? An S-Flow collector is basically a software utility that listens and receives the UDP datagrams from the network devices, and it creates alarms, it can create reports, time series, it can store the packets. So it's, it's a, a software piece that works after the agents to do some kind of analysis or reporting. So let, let's take, again, this uh, network topology that is a little bit more complex, but wants to show the overall architecture of an S-Flow monitoring system. In this example, we have the hosts, that are connected to, the S, to switches that are S-Flow capable. And the switches, those two switches, are sending UDP datagrams toward uh, an S-Flow collector in the top left part of this diagram. This time, I used green dashed line that are monodirectional. Those lines want to represent the S-Flow packets that are traveling from the switches to the collectors over, over the network that can be the internet as well. Those arrows, this time those lines are monodirectional because the S-Flow traffic always goes from the agents to the collectors and never the vice versa. So it's, the S-Flow traffic is always monodirectional. Okay, let's see, uh, let's discuss a little bit the S-Flow agents. As I've mentioned, the S-Flow agents are typically very lightweight and are designed to operate at, a, at very high speed. 
So they are implemented in uh, hardware or FPGA, and they are put into network devices by 10 of manufacturers. So chances are that your switch uh, will be as flow capable. There is also a software implementation of an S-Flow agent. So if you want to try it, or if you want to add S-Flow visibility to some parts of your network that, that are not monitored currently, you can use a host S-Flow. It's open source. You can download it uh, and, and try it. And this, this software works also in virtualized environments, containers, and hypervisors. OK, so let's now move to, the, to a brief the introduction of the available S-Flow collector that we have. Some of the collectors, the easiest, the simplest collector that you can find available is the S-Flow toolkit, which is basically a command line utility that is designed to collect and parse and visualize some of the S-Flow traffic. This S-Flow Toolkit is open source and freely available as well, so you can download it if you want to experience a simple S-Flow collector. There's also a collector called S-Flow RT that is scriptable this time. This means that you can use JavaScript and REST API to create your own functions, to create your own actions depending on the S-Flow traffic that you have received. This means that you can create an alert, for example, if a certain interface is going above a certain utilization level, or you can create an alert if you are receiving suspicious traffic from a certain host. You write your own script and create actions that you can interact with InfluxDB, Logstash, or, or whatever. Another collector that represents S-Flow using the, the so, using the network flows, using the concept of network flow, is NTOPNG. With NTOPNG, you have the ability to monitor multiple network devices and to have all of them reported and available in a single web user interface. For example, here, in this example, we have three S-Flow devices that are exporting their S-Flow toward a collector. And with a simple drop-down, we can select any of the S-Flow devices that we have in order, to, in order to have a live view of their traffic. Of course, their traffic that is sampled. So if I select one exporter, I immediately see that there are at least three flows, so three flows generated out of real packets flowing on exporter 10, 0, 2, 2, 53 at the present time. And least, but not last, Wireshark can be used as a collector of S-Flow. And we will see in the last part of this presentation that there are at least three, three ways that we can use Wireshark with S-Flow. We can use Wireshark to dissect the S-Flow traffic, but we can use Wireshark also to dissect the flow samples that are contained in the S-Flow traffic. And finally, we have also developed a, a Lua plugin of Wireshark that shows that wants to transform Wireshark in a more advanced collector to give you statistics on the interfaces activity, on the interface load and utilization, live activity and utilization, as well as on the top talkers that are communicating on your network devices. Now I would like to spend a few words on the transport used by S-Flow. S-Flow uses the TCP as the transport for the datagrams. 
why it uses TCP rather than it uses UDP rather than TCP, for example? Well, because the S flow agents are designed to work in very high speed environment, very high speed gigabit routers, gigabit switches. So UDP, first of all, it takes less memory and it, less, it takes less CPU because it, it's uh, stateless. So it means that the system doesn't have to keep a TCP session open. It doesn't have to keep the congestion windows. It doesn't have to keep the buffers. It just creates S-flow datagrams and send them out over the network. So it's even more robust when the networks are congested. Because yes, it's true that you will have more packet loss in a congested network. But that won't cause devices to do extra buffering or to wait for retransmissions, for example. In addition, as flow packets are sequenced. So if you have packet loss of UDP datagrams, you can still figure, figure that out on the collector. Another thing about the S-flow transport. S-flow it is said to be a push architecture. What does this mean? This means that the UDP datagrams are periodically and unsolicitedly sent from the agents to the collectors. This has a series of benefits. For example, Collectors doesn't have to discover for new agents. If you add the new agents to, the, to your network, you just configure the agents, and the agent will start sending the S flow to the collector. From the collector side, this is a zero conf operation. The collector will just receive new S flow from an extra device. There is also uh, a reduced workload, both on the collectors and on the agents. Because the collectors doesn't have to generate requests to query the agents and doesn't have to match requests with responses. And the same is true for the agents. They don't have to parse any kind of requests. When they are ready to export, they just create a UDP datagram and send it out over the network. These has also benefits from a security perspective because the agents that are running all your network devices doesn't have to have open listening ports. Moreover, the configuration of firewalls is somehow simplified because you have only to make sure that the communication from the agent to the collector can work, but not the vice versa. And least, but not last, of course, you have a reduced latency because you don't have to pay the round trip time to establish the connection as, as it is done with the TCP, where you have to see in, see NAC, ACK before doing, before doing an activity. OK, now that we have seen also the building blocks of the, the S-flow architecture with the agents and the collectors and the transport, I would like to spend some time on the sampling processes that are at the core of this technology. Sampling processes are two, and those sampling processes generate the counter samples and the flow samples we have already seen before. Let's start with the counter, the counter sampling. Well, the counter sampling it produces the counter values at periodic intervals of time. This means that you have a configurable sampling interval that is used by the S flow device to report cumulative statistics of the interface to the collector. Maybe it's more clear if we look at this picture. 
In this picture, we have a sampling interval delta and two lines that are input and output bytes, respectively. So the input and output bytes of a certain interface grow in time. If you have an S-flow counter sampling that is configured to export one sample every delta seconds, you will end up in having one UDP datagram every delta seconds containing all containing in this example the input and output bytes that have been sampled along with other information. Well, so sampling interval is configurable and is intended to be the maximum time between two consecutive samples. The S-flow devices are free to reduce sometime this interval in an opportunistic way, but it's not really. The other process, maybe the more interest, interesting, is the packet sampling process. So what is the basic idea? The basic idea of the packet sampling process is that we are operating on multi-gigabit switches or on very fast network devices. So we can't have visibility on all the traffic we need to sample. So we want to sample the packets that we see in the network device. But we want to sample them. We want to make sure that every observed packet has an equal chance of being sampled. This is to avoid the introduction of biases in the sampling process. So if we do sampling, it, it means that we lose the 100% visibility. So we won't be able to have 100% exact results. This is, but at the same time, S flow with S flow, S flow is able to provide us results with an accuracy that is statistically quanti quantifiable. Let's see an example. Let's consider this example where we have one million packets out of which we sample 10,000 packets at random. So we sample the 1% of these million packets. So what we have in our hand is are the 10,000 packets samples at random. So we have the 1% of the million packets that transited the network. Now we start looking at those 10,000 packets and we see that 1,000 of these 10,000 packets represent HTTP traffic. So now it comes the interesting part. Given that we have 10,000 samples, and given that we have 1,000 samples that are HTTP, we would like to say something more on the volume of HTTP traffic in the original 1 million packets. So what can we say about the million packets. How many of the original one million packets was actually HTTP, given that we have 10,000 samples out of which 1,000 are HTTP? Well, it can be proved mathematically that it is most likely that the fraction of HTTP traffic is in the same ratio as its fraction of the samples. This means that if, in this case, we have 10,000 packets out of which 1,000 are HTTP, this means that 10% of the sample traffic is HTTP. So it is most likely that this 10% holds also in the original unsampled traffic. So the most likely answer of this is 100,000 packets. So 
So even if we have only seen 10,000 samples, we can see that 100,000 of the original 1 million packets are HTTP. But, of course, this is uh, maybe it's a little bit oversimplified, this, uh, this, uh, this solution. Because actually, it is unlikely that the, that the HTTP packets in the original 1 million packet are exactly 100,000. It is unlikely. They could be 100,001, they could be 999, but it, it's unlikely to, that they are exactly 100,000. So the, we have an extra tool, which is called confidence interval, that helps us in understanding a range at around 100,000 that we can say, for example, I, I want to be, in, in this case, we can say, we can find an interval of 100,000 so that we can say that we are 95% likely that the actual number of packets fall within this range. In this example, if we do the math, we find the solutions that are written there. So this, the two parentheses give us the 95% confidence interval. So we can say, I am 95% confident that the actual number of HTTP packets in the original 1 million fall in that range. We can express the confidence interval also using a percentage. In this case, the percentage is 6.2%, so plus and minus 6.2%. So there are formulas that you can use to do, to do this calculation. They are very easy. Yes? So I have a question, probably could be a silly one. Did I just write that uh, if we use the flow, it's much more accurate than S flow? S flow, it's much, it depends. S flow, it can be more accurate at the expense of, a, of a extra CPU and RAM, because NetFlow is stateful. It requires to keep a lot of memory for all the open connections that are traversing a device. So that puts a lot of pressure on the device. And it's not always practicable. practicable. In addition, NetFlow works at the layer three. This means that you can operate NetFlow on your router or on your firewalls, but not on the switches, because switches work at the layer two. They don't have idea about the IP. S-Flow works at the layer two, so you can use it at, on, on the switches as well. It's true that if you use NetFlow without sampling, you will have a more accurate view of all the communications that, that, that are seen by your network devices. But again, at the expense of extra CPU, extra RAM, <coughs> and extra pressure on the network devices that you have. Moreover, S-Flow does not have any way to provide you with uh, packet samples. As we have seen, Earlier in this presentation, S-Flow takes the, takes the samples of the traffic and send them to the collector. This is not possible with S-Flow. With NetFlow, sorry about it. So you know the sessions with NetFlow, but you don't see the packets. So there are two solutions. There are pros and cons for both of them. And now I, I would like to spend a few minutes to, to compare S-Flow with, uh, with the other technologies, in, in particular with uh, SNMP. Other technologies, as I have mentioned our colleague just a minute ago, in the other technologies we can mention Cisco NetFlow or IPFIX, or the SNMP with the MIP2 or Armon. 
Let me take SNMP as a, an example to do this comparison, and specifically the MIB2 of SNMP. SNMP MIB2, it is true that it provides the counter samples, because if you use a SNMP MIB2, MIB2, you have the visibility on the interfaces status and on the counters of the interfaces. But what is missing from SNMP MIB2, MIB2 is that you don't have the concept of uh, packet samples. So you don't have an idea of who is using the network device. You know that the network device is used, but you don't have an idea of who is using the network device. So if we look at this table for a, a quick comparison, we see that the traffic visibility is missing from the SNMP column. In addition, while SFlow has a push architecture, as we have seen before, SNMP is a pool architecture. A pool architecture means that you have to query the SNMP device to get something back. Whereas with SFlow, you don't have to query the SFlow agents. They unsolicitedly send you the data. To do a comparison, I used this small uh, ubiquity router, and I configured it with SFlow and SNMP. Very, very easy, cheap device and easy configuration. OK, let's start with a focus on the S-flow samples. So this is a capture of the S-flow traffic generated by the ubiquity. And I wanted to filter the traffic to only see the samples, the counter samples, of an interface with ID3. We will see now why I selected only one interface. So let's, let's look at the filter. I said I want packets that contain only one flow, only one counter sample to do a sort of worst case analysis because you can put more counter samples in the same packets. I say they want sample type equal to two and type two equal counter sample only for interface three. And I, we can see from this picture that it takes 186 bytes to transport all the status and counter information of interface three. So you see many packets because they are sent out at regular intervals of time but basically it takes 186 bytes to send you the information of a certain interface of a network device. If I do the same using SNMP, I try to do the same with SNMP. So I asked SNMP five different counters for the interface tree. And here we can see that they and I basically queried SNMP to obtain the input and output uh, packets and bytes of the interface. So to get those five counters from SNMP, it takes 10 packets and 781 bytes. I could have used an SNMP bulk request that would have reduced a little bit the, the volume of traffic, but still the, the comparison is pretty clear. To have the same information, to obtain the same data, if you use SFlow, you pay 186 bytes. If you use SNMP, you pay 781 bytes to have the same information. So this is just to offer a quick comparison of uh, S-Flow with another technology. Now, in the remaining time that I have, I would like to show live demonstrations of Wireshark. When it comes to dissect S-Flow packets, 
dissect the packets that are contained in S flow and eventually to, to use the Lua plugin we have contributed to the community to see how it can be used with Wireshark. I'm gonna use the real S flow traffic of an ISP in Sweden that is called Inlead. So I will now SSH into the ISP to pull some, uh, some of its net flow, its S flow traffic. Demo number one. In this demo, we, we, I use Wireshark to dissect the S flow packets. That as we can see from here, an S flow packet has an header and then it can be a counter sample or it can be a flow sample with the real sampled packet contained in it. This is the command that I'm going to use. I, I will explain it now using a shell. Okay, can you read? Yes. Okay, so I'm doing an SSH on this host, and then I execute a remote TCP dump on the host. The TCP dump uses only port 6343, it uses port 6343 because I know that that is the port used by the agents to export S flow. And I'm telling the remote TCP dump to send pickup to the standard output. So dash W dash. I want pickup sent to the standard output. Then it's pretty easy. Pipe to redirect the standard output to Wireshark. And so if I execute this, I basically run at the TCP dump on the remote machine, pull the pickup files over SSH, and feed Wireshark with those, feed a local Wireshark with the S-Flow packets. And here we are. As we can see now, we have our local instance of Wireshark that is grabbing the S-Flow traffic, the remote S-Flow traffic. Let's pick now uh, a couple of, uh, of packets to have a more closer look at this. So here we have the header in mon S-Flow, and this packet is a flow sample. So what would I expect to see in a flow sample? Well, in a flow sample, I would expect to see a real traffic packet that was traversing the network device. And indeed, if I scroll down this, this flow sample, I see here row packet header. If we open this up, we have another nested level that says header of sample packet. And here we have Ethernet, Internet, UDP, and OpenVPN. So this is a real packet that was traversing the switch of our hosting provider. And now we have taken as flow and inspected the real traffic packet that was here. Is it the payload? Is? Is it the payload? No, it's configurable. You can say, I want samples up to this dimension. That can be 1,000 bytes, 1,050, whatever. It's configurable. So now, the other packets, the other samples that we can see is the, let me apply a filter, apply a filter, select it. So, sample type equal to one is the flow samples. 
So sample traffic bucket. If I specify two, I get only the counter samples. So this time, with counter samples, I don't have buckets because in counter samples I have information on the status and on the cumulative counters of the interfaces. Let's see, for example, let, let's see this one. Let me open the Ethernet interface counters. So this is all at zero. It means that this interface is not uh, transmitting or it has been reset. Let me see if I can find, okay, this one. So this one, this counter sample, I can see that my interface with index two is a full duplex interface. It is up and I can also see all the counters associated with that interface identified with index number two. So I see its inputs and output octet and packets. So it's not that really helpful to see those absolute numbers here. But if we can compare, as we will see later, if we can compare multiple counter samples in time, we can see the interface at actual speed. We can also see the utilization of that link because we have the interface, the maximum interface speed. So we can do a lot of calculations. Another, okay, so this is the first demonstration of the analysis of S flow packets using Wireshark. The other demonstration that uh, I want to show is the use of Wireshark not to dissect the S flow, but actually to dissect and analyze the sample packet contained in the flow samples. So what, what do I need to do in this, uh, in this example? I need a tool that somehow helps me in extracting the sample packet out of the flow samples because I want only them, I want to feed Wireshark only with them. The tool, in this case, the tool that I will use is called S-Flow tool, which is basically, as, a, as I have already introduced this in the presentation, S-Flow tool is a command line tool to, to do operation on NetFlow. So let me take the shell one more time So the first part of the command is the same, SSH and the remote TCP dump on port 6343. But now, rather than directly sending the output to Wireshark, I put this S-Flow tool in the middle. And with S-Flow tool, I'm telling S-Flow tool, hey, I want you to strip out all the S-flow information out of the flow sample in order to output only the sample traffic packets contained in your flow samples. I use the dash here to output pickup to the standard output, and then again, pipe wireshark. So now, I would expect to see in Wireshark, I would not, I would expect to see in Wireshark only the real traffic packets. No, not the S-flow traffic packets. So if I start Wireshark, here we are. As you can see from the protocol colon, S-flow is no longer present because now we are working with the samples of the packets seen on the switches of our 
hosting provider. So those are real traffic packets. And if we just look at those packets flowing, we can just guess there is some anomaly that is going on. What do you think? We see that there are reset ACK, reset ACK, reset ACK with sequence number and acknowledgement number equal to one. So those kind of reset ACK are seen when someone tries to probe you, when someone tries to do a TCP scan and the ports that is probing are closed. So let me try to, to apply a filter. Let me try to apply a filter on the reset. Yeah, so now if I use this filter, it's even more clear, this behavior. It seems that there are some hosts that are, maybe that there are scanning some destinations, and those destinations are responding with reset act, reset act, reset act. So now I will tell our friend at team lead to check this, because I really don't know why we are seeing all these resets. But it's something that it worth an investigation, yes? Do you configure your uh, wire chart uh, to not uh, worry about everything that's missing? Because uh, as you only do samples, you're probably, uh, for example, this is the first scene in the uh, mm -hmm. session, and I have a scene act on the wire chart. Those yeah, everything will be marked, everything will be marked, but in this case, it doesn't require any configuration because this is a packet that says reset ACK. Yeah, so in that case, but do you in that recommend case. configuring your Yes, in general, system? yes, yes, and this is a good point yeah. because as, as I've mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, with S-Flow, you can't do any kind of uh, session reconstruction. So what you have said is, very likely. So the color scheme of Wireshark will be completely broken because sessions will be partial. So you have to turn it off or create a color scheme that, that no longer worry you about missing a scene or missing, the, or missing acts, for example. Yeah. So in the last... Uh, in the last uh, minutes that I have, I, I would like to show the final uh, demonstration that uses the Alua plugin that we have written for Wireshark. The plugin, the Lua plugin is open source. You can visit GitHub, you can visit our GitHub page to download the plugin. And what does this plugin do? I think it's uh, better to show you this plugin with an example. Let me start Wireshark one more time with the S-Flow traffic. So this plugin uses Lua and tries to summarize the S-Flow counter samples to offer you a live visibility on the monitored interfaces. This means with that with uh, this plugin, you will have a summary, you will have an overview of the monitored interfaces, including their utilization. The plugin is available once it's, the installation is very, very easy. You just have to drop a Lua file in a Wireshark directory, and that's all. The plugin is available under Tools and Top as Flow Counters. So if you look at this, it refreshes dynamically. As soon as we receive counter samples, we refresh this view, see? And this view is giving us a summary of the 
monitored agents that are three in these cases. See, agent, agent, agent. So this S-flow traffic correspond to three agents that are sending their counter samples. Their agents send counter samples for their interfaces. So we use these counter samples to chart the input and the input and output bytes of the interfaces, as well as the utilization. So the first thing that comes out from this summary is that interface 20 on the second agent is 12% utilized. And now it's morning. In the evening, that can go to 35%. So while the other interfaces are not that utilized, the first thing that comes out here is that, hey, why is my interface 20 utilized at 50%? And we see the megabytes and the rates, the instantaneous rates of inputs and output bytes. So with this plugin, this, using this plugin is a way to turn Wireshark into a more human-friendly collector when it comes to user S-flow, when it comes to parse S-flow. The plugin has also another part that uh, gives us visibility not on the interfaces, but on the top talkers. So the top talkers that are traversing our network devices. I can click talkers and have this, this visibility. Now, again, this uh, panel updates itself as soon as we receive flow samples. And, and as you can see, we have our three agents that are that are monitored using S-Flow. And for these three agents, we have the visibility on the top sources and on the top destinations. We use the flow samples to do this kind of, uh, of accounting. And we are able to not only to tell you the total values of the top sources and the top destinations, we are also able to guess the rate at which they are sending or receiving the traffic. So we immediately know that, for example, on the last agent, immediately know that IP 178.78 is transmitted at 11 megabits per second. Is this OK? Should I worry about it? Well, this is the, the starting point of an analysis. But at least is a way to summarize an information that will that would be much more harder to find to find simply by looking at the S flow packets in Wireshark. So this basically it's basically now time to to wrap up. And I, I would like again to to remark that S flow is a pretty lightweight technology that you can deploy via software or you, you can turn it on on your network devices, very likely switches, that it allows you not only to answer questions such as, is this device overloaded? It also allows you to answer questions such as, who is utilizing my device? Who are the top talkers? And we have also seen how this S-flow can be analyzed with Wireshark, how Wireshark can be used to collect S-flow traffic, and even to have meaningful summaries of interfaces utilization as well as top talkers using the devices. If you want to try the Lua plugin, if you have some S-flow traffic, feel free to download or fork the sflowtap.lua is open source. Feel free to download, extend, and do whatever. And if you want to contact me, these are my references. So 
Thank you for your time. If you have any question, I will be happy to, to answer. So thank you.